Okay, back from the break. Let's continue on with this fun adventure. Go. So I did knock, I don't oh, knock into the wall already. I did mark a few extra things off on my tracker between episodes because I noticed I had forgotten to mark them. So if you notice a few differences, uh, that's why. All right, well, I got the postman's hat. Oh, oh, hello, free 200 rupees every time I start up a, a new day. That's nice. Can help me get the, can help me get the banker. Uh, banker checks as well, because you get a reward at two uh, when you deposit 200, then when you deposit 500, and then when you deposit 1,000 rupees. No 5,000, thankfully. That's one of the things I uh, made sure to change. Because trying to get 5,000 rupees is really uh, tedious. Okay, so here we are at the... Uh, I, I did say I was going to do a few mini games. Uh, just because their uh, their items are easy to get, in theory. So let's just see how well this works. I think I'm already... Did I do it? Oh, you had to be... Wish I knew there were... Wish I knew ways to, like... Not necessarily uh, cheat the system, but, like... Like, manipulations to make sure I get the things I'm looking for. I think I got it. Yes. All right. Well, that's reward number one. That is a nice trap. <laughs> oh, is it going to make me frozen uh, when I get out of this? Oh, no. Wow. I got a free pass out of a... Uh, I got a free pass out of an ice trap. Okay. So, with this treasure chest game, there's a different reward for every person. Normally, the Goron is the only one that gives a substantial reward in a heart piece but because of the way I've got everything set up that's dead end uh, because of the way I got everything set up each purse each uh, uh, transformation state has its own reward attached to it so the uh, human link gets a reward uh, Zora link gets a reward Goron link gets a reward and when I eventually find it the Deku uh, Deku link will have a reward Really? I had to be the other side again. And it's... How many diagonals do I have to go around? Oh, that's why I hate this game. It's not my least favorite, but I don't like this game. Eh, try to get through the corners. <sighs> Dang, this is gonna be... This is gonna burn through a lot of my rupees. Okay, well... Keep trying. Sometimes you get a lucky streak and get them all right off the bat. Sometimes you have to play this game for an eternity. Oh, well, I'll take that. Yeah, if you, I think if you go at fast enough speeds, you can actually glitch your way through some blocks. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take that because this game, this game already uh, tricks you enough. been really funny if I did it. So let's just do it from the other corner and see what happens. Actually, that worked pretty well. I don't think this is it, but uh, maybe? Oh, got tricked by the corner. Alright. Well, I won't be able to do another round as Goron Link because it uh, the prices fluctuate between transformation masks. But I can do it as Zora Link for only five rupees. I'll have to come back here with more rupees later. Well, let's try this again. Maybe I'll get lucky. I gotta say, this game is... Uh... Oh, look at that. First try. Well, okay, I actually get to keep those because I do have a bomb bag now. Okay, well, I don't have to play a Zora Link again. But I do need to get more rupees. If I want to be able to play them again. So let's just go visit uh, good old friend, uh, Mr. Time Traveling Banker. Oh, yeah. 
even dogs uh, appear, even dogs have different attitudes towards your transformation state. So that dog there was just like, oh, I want to be pet. Whereas gets uh, very scared of the Goron. Okay. So I'm going to do a little trick here. So I'm going to only withdraw 36, excuse me, 50. And then I'm going to go into the shop here and buy that silver rupee for 50, which gives me a uh, hundred. Talk about business. Okay. So there we go. Quick way to recharge the wallet. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to set up the Scarecrow song, because I know there's a few things I can do with that that I'm planning on doing with it. And no, because I already know the other time manipulation songs. But I've got that set, so that'll help. But I really want to get that uh, that treasure chest mini game done with the Goron, because I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to leave something that I know I could get unchecked right now. Like I know. Um, I I have a plan in my head, and I was kind of thinking about this during the break. Um, while the mini games are things I can do, I do have a couple of treasure troves I could visit, especially with all the things I found in the last hour. So I might go to Great Bay and go plunder the Pirate's Fortress, because there's a lot of treasure in there. But because I, uh... Because I got myself into this, I'm super invested. <laughs> I want to... I want to get these, uh... Uh, I want to get this treasure and then say, okay, at least I've done it. Seriously? How far back are we going? Oh my goodness, so it's on this side. Well, I don't have to, I don't have to rush, thankfully, since I know... Oh, it's on the other part. Okay, now I have to rush. Almost. Right on the dot. Okay, well, hard piece is hard piece, but I did it, so I don't have to come back here and play as a Goron again. Okay, uh, no thanks. Already finished. Alright, the other games might require a little bit more skill and uh, time investment, so I'm gonna leave those for I'm gonna leave those for now. I wanna I'm gonna go hunt for I'm gonna go hunt for items. And I'm going to start. Oops. I'm gonna start by going north. Because I have the Scarecrow song set. And there is something in the north, in Snowhead, that requires uh, the Scarecrow song to get. Now it's only a it's only a minor thing, so it's uh it's not like it's gonna get me uh, any closer to the end. There we go. Any? There we go. Got some. Got some arrows. Got some magic. Okay. Okay. Well, I can do this. Something into your proper. And makes the jump. And slightly loses it. Okay. So the nice part here is I can use regular arrows. Oh, oh, okay, I have learned something new today. <laughs> Either I had a really bad shot or you cannot uh, use fire arrows. Although, maybe I just have a bad shot. Okay, let's get speeding up here. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be going up to where the uh, Snowhead Temple is. I can't get in there unless I find the Goron Lullaby. And in which case, I could then, in theory, go explore that temple a little bit. Maybe get a few items. Um, if I wanted to... Uh, if I wanted to try, I could go for Great Bay. I do have... Um, I do have a means to access Econa Valley. I don't have means to get to the temple. And I do have some things I could do in 
Ooh, what's that? Is that like a deck? Is that a deck or not? I need a better view. Thank goodness uh, Goron Link can punch snow boulders. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Deku Nut. Okay, so I do not need the Scarecrow song for here. So that's good. That will allow it to be a backup for another thing I'm getting in a little bit. Because I do have a method to get it uh, with the Fierce Deities mask. But that's something you wouldn't normally do. Okay. There is a grotto here. Just don't get hit by the boulder. So we'll see what happens. Actually, I'm going to play one of the secret songs in the game. This uh, slows down the flow of time. I didn't play it on the first hour because I was trying to get to certain times quicker, just so I could check their items. But since I don't have that limitation, but I do have a snow boulder hitting my head, uh, I can... I can give myself more time so that I can do things for a lot longer. Ah, just a piece. But that does give me my sixth heart. Oops. Right, well, I'm gonna go. Tr I'm gonna go trigger the owl statue up here, and then I gotta make my way down the mountain. Still, really wish I had the song of soaring. So yeah, this is the source of the blizzard that is uh, uh, plaguing Snowhead right now. I'll even show here, too. This is something that's really cool. You can actually see through with the Lens of Truth. Which is a cool touch. I mean, they, they made Snowhead all about uh, being able to see things that you can't normally see, a la the Lens of Truth. So, at least they gave it a practical purpose. Oops. That is a tree. Okay. Enough speed. There we go. And I took that turn way too steep. Okay. Up and over. So, oops, that was close. Yeah, I always have to be careful coming down Snowhead. It, it, I find it harder to come down Snowhead, I think. Maybe it's just the, uh, the sharper angles. Okay. Well, I can't do... I can't do much else in Snowhead now. I, uh, I... I just don't have the means and items to do the... Uh, what else I can do. So, we'll go... We'll go explore Great Bay a little bit. There's a lot of things I can get through the Pirate Fortress. And I'm kind of hoping there's a few few things I can get. Alright, back in Termina. But the nice part is that when I find... If I find the Song of Soaring, and that was an angle, uh, I will be able to just warp right back up, and I can just continue the Snowhead quest that way. But now I do have to... Use opponent here, so time to summon the trusty steed. There we go. Here we go. Up we go. So I will do one thing before I go into uh, the Pirate Fortress. Because there is an item, and I was making mention of this before with the Scarecrow's Song. Uh, there is an item I can get on a, on a cliffside over here. I'm just going to go in the water because swimming as Zora Link is very fast. If I had to choose between... Uh, the Majora's Mask 3D remake in this game, I think this game nailed swimming a lot better. Because there's some people that say that swimming like this is way too fast and it's inaccurate. I, I feel like you can still maneuver uh, well enough. Oops. Okay. Uh, way up. There we go. 
So what I got to do here is make jumps across all of these uh, pathways here. And we will start with this. Okay, so you'll see a grotto down there, but that's a grotto for cows. So I can only get, uh, I can only get milk from that. Okay, so there's a little trick here I like to do. I don't think, don't think the Scarecrow song's gonna save me here. But this can only be done because I have the Fierce Deity Mask. Uh, Fierce Deity Link can make some really uh, big jumps. And if I can just nick the uh, edge of that corner there, which I did, thank goodness, I can make this jump here. And it's just a red ruby. Oh well, fills up my wallet. All right, so ditch the mask. Put on the Zor mask. And, <laughs> miss that. Now let's go raid the pirate fortress. So, the only way in, through the waterway. So this is where the stone mask will come in real handy. And plus, since I already have the hookshot, I can technically break most of the dungeon. Or, well, just place in general, but I can break most of it. So, I'm gonna take advantage of that. Oh, missed it. Oh well. You would think that the fish would not uh, bother me since I am wearing the stone mask, but oh well. I have enough health I can get over to here without any real issue. And the reason I'm doing it like this is so I can time when I hit the switch over there, because that allows me access inside the bottom portion. And this way, because I'm wearing the stone mask, the Gerudo pirates can't see me. So now I can just hop my way up here. And, th and now, because I've done it this way, I can go down and grab the chests without being spotted by the pirates. So we'll do this. On the switch. And if I wanted to, I could just use the hook shot, get in over there, but there are some chests that I need. So now we can head down to the, the waters beneath here, and there are three chests we can get, so hopefully I'll see something good. Chest number one. Ooh, hello. So that's another, uh, uh, another bout of my having to write down on my notes here. that all written down. I can do that on the final day, so I've got another uh, another purpose to keep going until the very uh, uh, last hours. Take that. Alright, what's chest number two got? Yes! <laughs> I got the warp song! Oh, I'm so glad I came here. There, now I can now I can warp places. I don't have to walk all the way back and forth. And thank goodness I've already triggered a whole bunch of the owl statues. <laughs> Alright, coming to the Pirate Fortress has already been very lucrative, and I've only opened two chests. Number three? Oh, okay. I'll take the Song of Soaring. Oops, get up a little higher. In we go. Alright, so, got a few underwater stunts to pull here, but then after that, uh, we'll be in the Pirate Fortress area proper. So, a little block puzzle pushing trick here. I'm only going to push it part way through, and you'll see why in a moment. Alright, so, little chest over here, and of course, because every chest can have something, I gotta, I gotta take a chance. Yeah, more bomb twos. Then we go over here and push this one in. And we can get over here. 
So this is, yep, stay down here. Just walk past all these uh, spike traps. If I was to go into the, if I was to go above them, I get pushed into a vortex that would push me out back into the main area. So don't want that. Now here's where uh, I can get a few things. Yeah. Oh yeah, my match was getting pretty low too. Should be careful. Not sure there are any, uh, not sure there are any magic refills here. All Night Mask. Okay, that's another thing I can check on a, on another cycle. I'll take that though. What do we got? Hard piece? Okay, I don't really have to worry about that one. And <laughs> barely had any shield, but it was just enough. All right. What's this one got? Oh, I need that. I Well, I need to know that anyway. It's another thing for me to note here. Now, this is only a refill. This does not give me a uh, bottle with it. But there is something that specifically requires blue potion. Uh, and I don't know if I'll have to do it. It's the uh, bottom of the well in uh, Ikana Valley. If I have to do the... If I have to do the well, to get in from one way, you absolutely need to give one of the Gibdos a blue potion. So because I have that, uh, doing that is a possibility. Okay. So a couple little uh, side hop tricks here. That gets me down here fast enough. So just keep a little high. There we go. There we go. So I think that's it for the underground chests. Okay, so thank goodness I have arrows. There we go, so this switch here triggers a water geyser. But I have to be actually on the water geyser. And then triggers that switch. There is a telescope to my left when you climb a ladder. Uh, if you want to actually view the inside of the fortress. And that way you could scout things out, because it, it does show you a pathway to a main area, if you don't know the layout. But, I already know what I'm doing. So, I will just be making use of the stone mask. Yeah, I can even, I can, I can look at them, and they won't even notice me. And that's, this is the surefire way of getting through a majority of this fortress. It's like I can even just pass by you right now and nothing to it. But this is where you would normally go to uh, trigger the starting events here. You'd look through here, you get a, you get a bit of a cutscene with the pirate leader. And then in order to make them vacate the room, you just summon a giant, uh, you summon giant bees! F. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd be running away from giant bees. Let's put the mask on just in case. Don't want to get thrown out of the fortress right now. And then there are, there's a chest in here, and there's also one of the plot relevant items that, uh, you'd need to do work here in Great Bay, which is one of the Zora eggs. Uh, 20 rupees. Oh well. Uh, but I don't have any bottles, so I can't even do... Uh, I can't even do anything that way. So, the eggs are going to have to wait for now. There's another two chests here, so we'll... Uh, I'll take a look here, see what these chests have. Oh. Uh... Reach? No, I have to. I have to be over this way to get this one. So I can be high enough to get this one. Come on. Oh, I'm missing it just barely. Let's go. Alright, what's this other chest got here? It's uh, more rupees. Well, could plunder this place for rupees if I need it. Um, 
Okay. Now another thing with the Pirate's Fortress, there are there are rooms that have chests in them as well, but only some of them. And there is only one uh, one room here that contains uh, a treasure chest when you pass one of the uh, Gruta Pirate Guards. So I'm going to go into this one here. If I got the right one. Yes, I think it's this one. So again, just pass by this guard here. But I enter into this area here. So these are some of the uh, uh, pirate guards here. They're reminiscent of the... Uh, oh. oh yeah, if you don't have enough health, they will actually toss you out. All right. Yeah, that does make things awkward. And I don't have... I don't need fairies on me either. Huh. That does make things awkward. I think I know what it'll do. There's a chest... There is a chest I can get for free. Because I have the stone mask, it just makes it infinitely easier. And then I'll... I will probably have to make a return trip here for some things. So I'll get this chest. And then I will figure out the next game plan. We'll just go in here. Now this, I, I love how much of a fake out this chest is. Like there's three guards around here. Ooh, that heals my health. Okay, I can reattempt the fight. Um, there's three guards around here. If you shoot all three of the guards down to stun them, uh, you can get the chest, but the guards wake up almost instantly after you open the chest, which I find kind of funny. Okay. So, just do what I did before, but I do have enough health I can withstand some of the sword swipes. And if I really wanted to play dirty on this fight, <laughs> I can equip this. But, of course, only in the room. So, get ready for this one. <laughs> you ever thought you'd see this day? Okay. I can even target you. Yep. Yeah, if you really want to cheese the fight with the Fierce Deity Mask, that's how you do it. <laughs> Okay. And yeah, so I did remember right. Jeez, now that memory's uh, talking to me right now, I almost feel like there's another chest I'm missing that would be in another room. Gotcha. All right, yep. Taking care of the big boy there will take care of every other uh, mini fish in the area. What do I get? What is it with bomb shoes this time? <laughs> Getting a lot of those. All right. Well, let's just exit the room here, and then I think I can do some Song of Soaring. Yeah, I want to say that's like a cricket chirp or a high-pitched whistle or something. Uh, okay. So, game plan now. I think I'll do some work in Ikana. Because I have Epona and the Hookshot and the Garo's Mask, I can go that way. So, let's... let's have some fun. Gonna need some magic, though, too. I'm getting pretty low there. Okay. On we go. So I'll make a I'll make a quick pit stop to the Ikana graveyard. There's a few there's a few things I can do there. Not a whole lot, but it's something. Given the ability to get items at the time that I had the hook shot. And Epona Song, I probably could have gotten these, so maybe they'll have something I, I need. 
At least it's a lot easier to traverse this area with a Pona for, or, um, in the daytime. Or nighttime, not daytime. What the heck am I talking about? Okay. So go up this way. And here we are in the graveyard. So we got a bunch of stall children around here. Uh, they love to make the graveyard their home. Then up here, we have this giant uh, stall foes. Or, well, I'll say giant stall child, but... Uh, I'll, I'll be dealing with him in a bit. But there is, a, there is a grotto here, and of course, grottos means items. And I'll take the arrows. I need those. Okay. What do we got? Well, hard pieces are hard pieces. And of course, gotta, <laughs> gotta be ready with this, because if you really want to cheese something... Okay, so... Yep, I did play that right. So, gotta play the Sonata of Awakening, which is one of the few songs that has a use outside of its uh, dungeon uh, uh, dungeon entrance. I awaken this giant... Uh, his name is Captain Kida, and he'll start running away. So... Gotta stop him before he makes it to the end. Just, oh. There's a lot of things that are not meant for... Okay, it's probably easier if I don't target. There we go. Ah, so many things are easy to cheese with Fierce Deity. So since I beat him, he gives me access to what is originally his uh, remains as a mask. But since I don't uh, know what's in the chest, I don't know what he's left for me. So if I can aim a hook shot. There we go. What did he leave me? Elegy of Emptiness. That is awesome. Okay. Well, I am one Ocarina Song short of being able to at least enter all the dungeons. That's really cool. We're making progress. <laughs> I am not here to fight. I am just here to find things and then leave. If I do eventually find the captain's hat, which is uh, Skull Kida's mask, or Captain Kida's mask, uh, I would be able to command those uh, uh, stall children to open uh, the graves, and I'd be able to find items. But anyways, here we have this ghostly being here. And he grants you access only if you have the Garo's Mask. Which makes this one of the few non-transformation masks required to get through uh, the area here. Okay. So we'll do this. Even with no magic, it's still faster than most forms of travel. Thank goodness. All right, so here we are in Econa Valley. So I'm gonna make my way over here a little bit. Uh, there is a Deku scrub over here. Okay, Silver Rupee there. Okay, and what do you sell? And you sell Deku nuts, so I don't even have to worry about that. So there is an item attached to giving them their deeds, but I don't need to worry about that per se. Well, until I actually find the deeds. So, okay, here's another way I'm breaking the game. So, ordinarily, there's two Octoroks that show up there. You use the ice arrows, and you freeze the way over with uh, uh, frozen stepping stones. But if you're a giant like the Fierce Deity, you can just make the jump. <laughs> you ain't hitting me. And then I can access the... Uh, tree stumps over here. Oops. And... I'm up. So here I'll trigger the owl statue. 
And then I'm going to make a quick leap down here. Because there is a grotto I can access here. So I'll get that real quick. And there's a, there's a cave full of mini bosses back there that uh, I would be able to go fight. Ordinarily, I'd have to have the light arrows and a whole bunch of health to meet the requirements to do it. But they did take out the health requirement in the randomizers. That'll help. Uh, so I, all I need to do is find the light arrows and I can access that little mini boss gauntlet. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do something here. What does the Goron drum sound like? <laughs> that is so weird. So I, fo I found the, the Oka drums, or however you want to call it. But since I do have the statue triggered, I can just warp myself right back up here. Now, this, uh, this land of the undead that I can, s I still mess up my rules. Uh, move, there we go. Uh, the land of the undead here, so I, I have to deal with Gibdos and Redeads and Wallmasters and all that fun stuff. But here's the one use of the Song of Soaring. So we have these, uh, we have those who have sold themselves to the dead. And now I must use the Song of Storms to wash away the curse. So there we go, that takes care of that. Now I just remembered I cannot do what I was about to do because I don't have the Song of Healing. So I'm gonna go in here instead. I don't even have the Song of Healing to reduce the price. Okay. So I've got three minutes here to beat the four Poe Sisters. You can remember them, they're the same Poe Sisters from uh, the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time. And they're even beat the same way too. Just got to... Just gotta be able to get them to reveal themselves long enough. And two jump slashes can take care of them. And now we have to deal with the two twins. Oh, oh, oh. I say twins, but they're ordinarily just dealt with together. Ouch. Yeah, the I, I kind of scrolled by the text uh, really quick there, but the uh, the the guy who was there. He said, if my health falls below three hearts, he'll end the contest. So I cannot uh, I cannot take too much damage. So I gotta I gotta play this a little carefully. So just use the shield here, give him a few hits. Stop them halfway in their spin, and then jump slash them. And thank goodness I still have the Razor Sword, so I have slightly stronger sword hits. Oops. Okay, I gotta be real careful here. Thankfully, if I if I can make this last jump slash like that, now it's uh, the post sister that love to multiply. So I just gotta watch for the spin. So she won't attack unless I miss three uh, her three doppelgangers. That was easy. Yeah, if you wanna if you shield down a bit, you can kind of extend your camera out just enough. Huh. You're playing nice with me today. Just two more hits, maybe? I think it was you. There we go. Well, hey, I managed to do it. And just barely, too. Okay, so we've done that. And reward. Blast Mask! Okay, well, I have bombs, so it's not... It's not absolutely required. Okay. Uh, I do have... 
Oh, finally enough, I have the Elegy of Emptiness now, and the Deku Mask cannot be used to press down switches. So I could... I could make my way up to Stone Tower Temple right now. And there even is an owl statue up there that I could press. So why not? One of my favorite areas in terms of music, one of my least favorite areas in terms of puzzles. Get ready to hear the Elegy of Emptiness like crazy. Uh, just deal with you now. So how this works is there's a bunch of switches that you have to press and they'll help raise uh, uh, razor maneuver stone blocks, but the switches need to stay pressed. And that's where the Elegy of Emptiness comes in, where it summons a shell of yourself to keep the switch pressed down. In theory, a cool idea. In practice, very tedious. Oops. That'll be fun to watch this as it goes down. So, yep. Oops. And at this at this point it becomes how fast can you play the Elegy of Emptiness? Alright, there's that shell. And then I have to go down here. Get completely smushed by a boulder. And here's the third. Oops. go. Thank goodness I found the Song of Soaring. I only have to do this once. Well, I say only once, but this isn't the last time I have to do that particular puzzle. I gotta do it uh, going up. I think I have one more puzzle of this that I have to do. And then I'll be at the Owl Statue. And then I have to do this uh, particular type of puzzle once more to even enter the temple, which I really, I wouldn't even be able to get too far in, but at the very least this opens up the way. And here, I think. And, let's see. You were the first, right? Nope, you were not the first. I think, you're, I think you're even the last one. That's the right way. Yes. So yeah, we'll go with that one first. And of course, I can only have one shell out at a time, so this will get rid of the one that I summoned beneath me. I'm doing pretty good at landing on the switches. I just kind of wish I didn't have to deal with uh, the slide out animation every time. All right, well, you out. Oops. There we go. Just whistle out the eulogy every time. You. Now I just have to make my way back up. Make it a little easier. You hook onto the top of the towers. It makes it uh, a little easier to get up. Well, that's the second one dealt with. Oh! Never mind. <laughs> To hit the, I have to hit one more switch. Over here. It feels so weird to hear the ocarina sound come out of a drum. 
makes me wonder what the uh, Deku Mask uh, pipes will... Oh. That was bad for me. You know it helps if you keep a hold of your controller. All right. Now I've got all three platforms here. And I don't have to go over the rest of the way. Boulder, get out of my way. I think now it's go down here. Get a little closer. That allows you to hit this switch. And then... I had a feeling that was going to happen. I thought I heard the sound. And we're at the top. So let's trigger this now before I forget. Get that. Get over here. I'd like, I'd like some health. There we go. Magic and bombs, I think? Yes. Okay. So now that I've taken care of that, there's not really a whole lot else I can do. So I think it's time I try some of the other, some other things I could try. Now I do have the, I do have the express mail, so there is something I can do there. I have the all night mask, so I can do something on the second day. Going to. I'm going to advance time forward and start on the second day. Because the mini games here are closed at night. So I thankfully have an Ocarina song that lets me advance time forward. I'll attempt. If I was really smart about this, I should have attempted the Honey and Darling game on the first day. And I could have attempted all three. But I'm going to see what their reward is for any day, because you have to deal with that. Uh, it, it's basically a super consolation prize every day. You only get, you would normally only get the biggest reward if you uh, did all three days and won. There we go. That was close. So, this mini game here, as you can see, I just have to toss bombs into baskets. So, it's basically just basket bomb. I think. Yes. So that one. I, I'm glad I at least picked this one because it is kind of a quick game to check and see what uh, reward you'd get. And it's a compass to Woodfall. All right. Uh, well, let's see what can happen here at my least favorite N64 Zelda game. And you would think this, like, this one's simple. It's just hit a bunch of targets and uh, that's how you'd win. The way this particular minigame is constructed, I do not like it. It's, the, it's one of the things I dread the most, trying to get everything in this game. If I somehow miraculously get a perfect score, I may stick around, but I'm just trying to get the record. And the reason for that is how it, how you get the rewards at this particular place. You get a reward for beating the record, and then you get a reward for a perfect score. Okay, I broke that one. I'm doing okay. I'm just going to stay silent for the next few seconds. I 
should have aimed for the other one first. Well, okay. I'm glad I did this one, because it got me the ice arrow. And you know what? Because I was so darn close, I'm gonna give it one I'm gonna give it one attempt to get the perfect score. And if I don't get this one, so be it. I'll deal with that at another time. But I have every tool now to do uh, the Great Bay Temple. So I'm just going to focus here for the next minute, make sure I don't uh, miss something up here. Yes! <laughs> oh, I feel so good to have gotten that. And I don't have to deal with it ever again in this randomizer seed. Well, it wasn't required, but I'm super happy I did it because now I have my favorite sword. <laughs> Hello, Gilded Sword. Okay, well, I've, I've taken care of that. So I can do, well, funnily enough, it's more things in Great Bay. Uh, I'm going to... I have to wait until it's 8 in the morning to be able to access the inn. But I do have the all-night mask, and that's where I would normally use it. So I'm just going to let time advance here a little bit faster. Pop on the all-night mask here. Uh, some days you just wish time could move a little faster. There we go. It's 8 o'clock, so door's open. And now I'm gonna go visit uh, Anju's grandmother over here, who's like, oh, well, let me read you a story, dearie. And normally, uh, this is how you would advance time uh, without the ocarina. But her, her stories get a little long-winded, and you tend to fall asleep. So, what do you do? You wear the mask that prevents you from falling asleep, and then you just answer her questions, and she'll give you a reward. Well, that helps. Uh, aren't you grandma first story? Okay. Now, what helps there is I do know how to get through a majority of the temples without their small keys. Uh, Stone Tower, not so much. Uh, you do need... You do need all the keys to be able to do the whole thing. But if you plan it right, uh, you can do... You can find two small keys and do the first half, reset time, and then grab the same two small keys, invert the temple, and do the dungeon that way. Now that one is... Oh, you listen so hard. Okay. Alright, hard pieces are hard pieces. Okay, well, that is, that is, oops, can I, ah, wouldn't be able to do it without uh, talking to her. Okay, so we'll just, just leave here. Now what, uh, I'm gonna take an attempt here at, uh, in what is, in my opinion, one of my favorite uh, games to do in this one. And that is uh, the Beaver Race minigame. And the game itself, all it is, is uh, you, you race beavers through a bunch of rings. And you have to get through all the rings and arrive at the finish line before time's up. And uh, you would, you'd win the prize after you've raced both the beaver brothers. Uh, reason it's my favorite is... I like to I like the swimming as the Zora. 
So it, it it's a fun way to it's a fun way to practice. Now, I guess while I have a little time here to kind of go through my thought process because I was super focused on uh, the archery game there. I I briefly stated it, it that one there was my least favorite N64 uh, Zelda mini game. And you'd think, oh, well, you got a 49 the first time and a 50 the second time. Like, you you clearly know what you're doing. And yes, I, I, I have practiced enough that it's like, okay, I'm somewhat competent at doing it. But it's the way the minigame itself is structured that I just don't like. Um, for, for greens, let's just say, like, in my opinion, there are two, there are two types of, uh, we'll say minigames, where it's, it's high score, so it's get as many as you can within a specific time limit, and then where it's, uh, you're racing against the clock to reach an objective, so it's timer-based. And the reason I I would like the other uh, mini game, which is uh, we'll call it the Swamp Archery. Uh, the mini game itself is get uh, shoot all the targets within the time limit. They give you a lot of time to do it, like. Very rarely have I ever had a bad uh, bad enough game that I've exhausted the timer of the Swamp uh, Archery game. And as long as you know which targets you need to hit uh, that would disappear, uh, you can, in theory, get the rest of the, uh, the things you need to shoot in the Swamp Archery game, and then you would uh, you'd win the game. And Maybe a better example here, too, of a, uh, a good timer-based game is uh, this particular uh, swimming minigame here. If you notice here, uh, you have to swim through a certain number of rings and then reach the end. Now, you're always going along a set path, so uh, you would think that the game itself is... Uh, like it's long, it's just long enough that like you can swim all the rings through, and you'd have to get perfect to be able to like make it just in time. Not true. Uh, this game gives you a lot of leeway when it comes to the swimming. So like, I'll bet I'll reach the end here with maybe like thirty seconds to spare. I I'm just that's just a guess, mind you, but. Uh, they, it gives you a lot of leeway, so that if you hit one of the uh, if you hit one of the rings at a bad angle, you can you can get yourself back going. Like it, it it's fun because it's fair, and they do they slowly ramp up the challenge as you go on. But if you realize you can still swim to the end of the racetrack here. Oh hey, look at that! About thirty seconds left, give or take a bit. But you can see it like. You, you can make a mistake or two and still do it. But then we get to the town archery and why I don't like it so much. And I didn't... I'm, I'm not going to make a good case for this because I got 49 the first time and a perfect the second time, just like exactly as planned. Uh, but the way the game works is uh, anytime you hit... Uh, one of the blue Octoroks, you lose time, which is about, you lose about three seconds off the clock. You cannot get a perfect score if you hit a, a single blue Octorok. And I know that sounds um, weird. It's like, oh, you missed a target, so therefore you can't get a perfect. I just swam right through that. Okay, so here's a perfect example. I made, I made a light mistake, but I came. I can come right back, and I'll still finish with a good amount of time to spare. That's what's making it fun. But the um, with the town archery, yeah. So yeah, there's the there's the blue octorocks that take time away if you uh, if you miss or if you do if you hit them. But the all the octorocks that you have to actually shoot down are only on that particular lineup for about five seconds, and then they disappear. And if you, if even one of them escapes, 
you don't get a perfect score and you can't get the second reward. Now, the first reward, okay, fine. It does give you a little leeway. You, you need to get a 40 out of 50 to get that reward. But it, it goes against a good minigame principle because it's either you're going against the time trying to get a high score or you're trying to shoot all of the targets or whatever and you have a you have a limited time to do it but it doesn't give you enough leeway to say okay you can make a mistake or two and you'd still be fine all right heart piece is heart piece so that that in a nutshell is why i don't really like the the town archery game now, the, um, as I said before, that's why I'm, I much more prefer the Swamp Archery game, because it it gives you enough time to achieve the high score that you're looking for. And even this challenge here, where it's like, okay, so we're going to race you again for a different reward. Uh, you have to do the same thing again, but you have slightly less time. But it's not... It, it's not, like, down to the wire. I can... If you saw, I finished with 30 seconds in the first race... Uh, take 10 away, I should be able to finish with 20 seconds. And as you saw there, I made one light mistake with the older Beaver Brother, and uh, still came out of it pretty good. That's why I love coming back to this one, and why I did not uh, decide to skip or shorten the length of this one. I mean, the only two things that I actually like shrunk down were just the tedious things of the bank and the lab fish. But uh, I, I enjoy this game enough that I decided to just keep it in and uh, work with that. Oops, there we go. Light, oh, ooh, little camera trick there, but hey, light little bonk, no big deal. So here we are, final stretch of this, and we're almost at last 12 hours, which is good, because there's one more thing I can do. Oh! That's a jump. Okay, two rings to go. One ring. So yeah, about 20 seconds. So, I could have still made, like, two more mistakes and still had enough leeway. Alright, so same thing again. 25 rings in a minute 50. It's pretty... I think it's the same path as before. So we should be just fine. And then I will... I'll go deal with the express mail because there is something I can do with that. Oh, little jump there. Oh, bell's ringing. Now another cool thing with the beaver race here is that the race pathway is actually different every day. I think, I think, yeah, day one for sure is different to day two, but I'm not sure about day two to three. I'm not noticing enough differences that make me think there's something different. Okay. So down we go here. Oops. So there we go. Oops. There we go. Good. Made that one. That one is a little difficult. Unless you unless you were expecting it and aim it right. But that was the last major hoop to jump through. So just the final stretch here. I mean, if you... At least these rings here hang in the water a little bit. So if you, if you don't like your ability to jump, you can just hang around the top part and you should be able to get through no problem. There we go. And that takes care of the beaver racing. Now, please don't be something that's absolutely uh, required to keep getting over and over again. Thank goodness. <laughs> please let it be over. <laughs> All right, well, I don't have to deal with anything else here. So I'm going to go back to Clock Town to do the one last thing that I can do in this cycle. And then I'm going to be taking a, another quick break. 
because I've been recording for about an hour. I don't want to try to go over like I did last time. So now we have to go this way. Now, the thing with the express mail that I got is that there's two ways you can go about using it. You can either give it to uh, the post uh, postman here. He realizes, oh, hey, it's priority mail. It needs to be delivered. And as you can see here, the postman, he is incredibly schedule bound. So you have to break, you have to break the, uh, the way that the, you have to break it with a priority item, which I will do here. So then he will go deliver it to the post mistress, which is actually, uh, uh, Madame Aroma, who you remember, uh, would give you the cafe mask. Uh, but she's hanging out in, uh, the Clock Town Bar. So I just have to wait for, uh, Mr. Postman to show up, and then he'll go in and deliver the mail on his own accord. So I can, I can literally just park it here for a moment. Uh, so he'll go in, he'll deliver the item, and then he'll come out and be like, Well, I've now been given the order to flee, I am now free. Here you can take my postman's hat, which I have already collected, but he will give you something different. But then the other way you can use the item is if you take it into the bar and uh, show the cafe mask to Madame Aroma, she'll be like, oh, hey, you're the person I hired. Did you find out anything? Hand her the letter and she'll be like, oh, what a, what a last piece of good news before the world ends, which I know sounds morbid, but uh, very well. And she'll give you an item there. So, you gotta pick which way you do these normally. Now, I just have to wait until he shows up. It should be any minute at this point. Any minute. There we go. <laughs> Now, he'll give us the item. Well, screw that noise. <laughs> That's the one thing you don't want to see. Uh, so, I'm going to make note of that. In the very rare case I need it. But, as you can tell, that is something that is um, an item I don't keep throughout all of this. Oh, uh, do I still? Oh, I could have got that at the very start. Um, as you can, uh, because the item is gotten so close to the end, uh, you don't. Uh, it's one of the things you really hope you don't need to keep getting. And thankfully, it wasn't like uh, uh, we'll say an item that explicitly locks something. Do I keep that stray fairy? No, I don't. But since I don't have... I don't have the Deku Mask, I cannot keep... Uh, I, I cannot get that stray fairy. Unless it was like a really... Well, actually... I wonder... Since time's almost up here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a little fun with some experimentation with my good friend, the Fierce Deity. <laughs> okay, so... If I time the jump right... Okay, I can't jump on that. Can I jump up here? Hard to control this, uh... Hard to control this giant. Okay, I'm gonna have a little fun here. Since I can get into the inn now... Let's take care of that. I'm gonna go up here. And maybe if I angle the jump right with Fierce Deity, I can actually get the Stray Fairy. <laughs> I have learned a new trick. <laughs> well, that's good. And then I can hand the Stray Fairy over as a transformed state and get the reward from that. And watch this be something that could have been really useful uh, in my very early quest of things. Alright, so second reward. 
the bottle of red potion. Okay. Well, that's good. I kept a bottle. And that also gives me something else I can do right now so as to not waste this. Man, I hope this doesn't turn into a chain of things to keep going. <laughs> I said I was going to end this cycle like five minutes ago and here I am doing a whole bunch of different things. Oh well. Bring a Pona forth because I can now hand the red potion off to... Uh, there's an invisible soldier right where I was uh, entering into uh, Ikana Valley. Well, oh, that's another thing I can do too. I'll do that on the next one. Um, and he's like, oh, you finally noticed me, but I'm too weak to do anything. Oh, yep, here we are, the last six hours. All right. Let's go do this real quick, and if he gives me something I can use, then great. Ends of truth. So here is Shiro the Stone Soldier, and this is who would normally give you the stone mask. But now, red potion given, he gets his health back. Okay, well. Go do a last rupee deposit. Then, cue the end. Well, I gotta say, this cycle's been pretty good. Finding the Song of Soaring has helped me out immensely. There we go. And I know that there's a couple of uh, light things I can do on the next uh, cycle. But I gotta figure out... I mean, if I wanted to, I can beat Great Bay uh, in its temple and then work from that. That might be what I'll do on the next part because then I'll be able to uh, get things going here. And I do remember, I did find the express mail. Uh, nothing else of note. So all is good here. All right, time to reverse time. And back we go. All right. Pause. Well, there we go. That ends that. That ends that cycle of fun. Uh, a lot of progress being made there. That's doing pretty good. So I'll, I'm going to take my break now, and then when I resume. I'll probably do Great Bay Temple and get it done because I've I've got uh, I got the location of the boss key. I've got the location of the small key. Uh, I got the ice arrows, and I do have the Zora mask, so I can I can access the dungeon. So I can uh, I'll, I'll I think I'll do that on the next part. But anyways, thank you much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, stay safe, and have a good day.